I just started work on my dream video game project. I'm a solo developer, I've released my own video game, and I've done about 20 game jams. I think it's about time for me to take on a bigger project. And there's one that's been festering in the back of my mind for years, you know, already experiencing feature creep, already way bigger than I can ever manage to do on my own, but I'm gonna try. I'm a big fan of 3D platformers, and I love the Jack and Daxter games, and my favorite game of all time is probably Super Mario um, Odyssey. And I want to create something that gives me the sense of fun and the sense of like freedom of exploration and the sense of adventure that those games do. Um, and I want to, you know, create like a twist on it. It's going to borrow heavily from those ideas. It's going to, a lot of the movement mechanics are going to borrow from platforms that already exist. And I'm going to add to them myself as well and, and create like different sort of variations on, on those moves. So, but I won't bore you with those details right now. I just want to jump straight into it and get started because the longer you spend talking about it and thinking about it, the less it actually gets done. So let's go ahead and start this game and make this character and get him moving around. So the first consideration I had to make was, do I build this character controller up from the ground up? I knew I didn't want to use Unity's rigid body system because it's full of complications when you're trying to make like an accurate, satisfying movement kind of game. And I want this game to be slick. I'm designing this game with speedrunners in mind. I want people to get excited about the movement tech inside the game. I want people to discover new things about how to move around and when they come back to it time after time they don't feel like the controls are letting them down, not able to play it in the way that they want to play it. Those like rigid bodies can slide around all over the place when you don't want them to and you know the collisions don't really work in the right way and if you want to get your character to move in a certain way it's very difficult to to set that up to be exactly how you want it to be without programming the maths yourself. So I didn't want to do all that myself. I'm not in the business of reinventing the wheel. There's people who are smarter than me who, you know, come up with the maths for like good character controllers and things like that. And why not? You know, if I was working on a film, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be expected to, you know, birth Robert De Niro in order to use him in my film. I'd just pay him money and use it, so I'm going to do that and it's going to cut like a massive chunk of time out of the development of the project and make probably everything a lot smoother and a lot nicer for you. So I wanted to start off with a, something that was already made and then add to that myself and it's going to change a lot. It's going to be completely different by the time I've done with it, um, but it will be really helpful to have all that set up in the beginning. So here what you're looking at is we have um, a tool by Philippe Saint Armand and this is available on the Unity Asset Store. You can go and buy it and check it out if you want to. It's absolutely amazing. We've got a bunch of things already considered in here like, you know, collisions in tunnels, uh, like sticking to moving platforms, or well, like no matter how fast they're moving around the place, going up and down stairs and slopes. You, I mean, it's not obvious when you look at these games, but there is maths involved in almost everything. You know, when you go over the top of a slope, in order to stop you from launching off and into the air as you go over the slope, there needs to be maths to tie you to the ground. And this is already taking all of the work that I would otherwise have to do just out of the equation. And it's a really stable, really great tool. And I'd recommend it for anybody who's looking to start their own platformer. But of course, nothing's ever perfect in game design. And there's already a problem here where uh, once you set the camera to follow the character smoothly at using his script, it sort of jitters behind it. And it took me a while to figure out this what, what this was. But what it turned out to be is actually the camera is not set up right to follow the character. So I set the code for the camera to update in the fixed update, which is the physics update, rather than the normal update, which happens every frame. And once I did this, everything was fine. But then I noticed that the character wasn't jumping sometimes when I was telling it to. And that's because the control inputs were now in the fixed update, which doesn't happen every frame. So if I press the uh, jump on a frame, which is just in the, where the physics update is just happening, that might not necessarily happen on the, on the immediate frame. So I moved the control code back into the normal update, which happens every frame, and now it's all fine. So the next thing I did was hook up controls so I can use a PlayStation controller to move around because that's the main way I imagine people playing this game. And then I wanted to add my own camera to, to sort of stick to the floor and track the player as they're running around 
uh, rather than just stick in one position relative to the player. So that's sort of like Mario Odyssey might do or, you know, Super Mario Sunshine or the 3D Zelda games. And I've also set it up so that when the player is headed directly towards the camera, it doesn't move. I figured if people want to turn the camera around, they can just do that themselves with the right analog stick. The camera doesn't need to do automatically do that for them. I've also set it up so that the camera sort of looks left and right, depending on whether you're going left or right. So it kind of anticipates the movement, the direction that you're moving in so that you can see what's ahead of you. Then I made it so that when you crouch, the character walks at a different speed. And then I decided that I didn't want to do anything more to the movement without knowing a bit more about what the character is going to look like. As an animator, I found that it helps to know what your character looks like. A lot of the time you can do all this animation and as soon as, soon as you stick the model in, you realize that it's completely wrong. So the inspiration I have for the style of the game is really weird and niche. I found this subreddit called Mobile Frame Zero and it just has people posting these sort of mechs, these robots uh, designs made with like very minimal amounts of Lego and you get these sort of really like appealing, very kind of cute, almost looking robots but also look quite badass and I think that it's like perfect sort of um, material for a platforming video game. I'm actually not a fan of the whole like look of the really complex mechas, the ne Neon Evangelion, whatever. Um, uh, I don't like that, but this sort of like simplicity paired back this much, I'm all about this. So this is the first pass of the model I came up with. And I was quite happy with this at this point. I thought this is sort of looking a lot like the designs I was seeing on the website. We wanted to just try and stick it in and see, it, what, it, see what it looked like. But it turned out that when it was in the game, I just there was something missing. It just didn't look right. It was too bulky. It was too square. It was too like uh, hard edged. I didn't think that it was cute enough to be a main character, one that could be the face of, that I see on the box art every day. So what I did was I sort of, when I was in the editor, I just sort of smushed all these parts together. I just like compacted it a bunch, just scaled everything. I wasn't thinking about using these as final assets. I just wanted to see if I could come to a better sort of conclusion with it and end up with this really like satisfyingly proportion sort of buff little you know tank character <laughs> but he's also cute and I was really happy with this direction. I then needed to figure out what I was going to do about articulating this character and I, originally I was thinking I was going to create like a character rig and then I realized that this thing is solid it's a robot it's basically like the way you animate characters traditionally in games is you add a bunch of bones to them but he's essentially all bones already. So I just set him up uh, so, so that I could animate him just using the pivots of the objects and the hierarchy. And he works just like any other rig. I won't be able to use any sort of Unity's fancy uh, tools or anything like that that would work on skeletons. But if I do this for all the characters, I'll save a bunch of time you know, where it takes a long time to rig a character in Maya or Blender and then import it in. And there's always massive amounts of complications that come with doing that, export settings and things to be considered. So I'm actually really excited about this approach of just keeping everything within within Unity almost, not having to go to any other sort of like 3D CAD packages apart from just modeling. So then I just jumped straight into animation and I was so excited about this because when I was thinking about all the work that I was going to have to go into rigging, I was thinking that animation would be days, even a week off. And I love this part of the process. As an, I've been an animator for eight years uh, professionally and I actually learned to code as a hobby. So animation is probably where I would consider myself an expert much more than I am a, a, a proficient coder. So we've got these run and jump animations, which are quite basic, but I could, I'm going to come back to all the animations in the future probably and beef them up. I just didn't want to spend too long on anything at this point. And he's got like a nice little idle animation where he sort of like, you know, pistons up and down. And once that was done, I added just a frame really of landing, like a transition frame. It's just a keyframe that plays when you land and it squishes the character and it adds that nice little bit of impact. And you might not also notice that when the character jumps, this squish animation happens as well. So that's what we call um, anticipation in the animation world. And it really helps to sort of sell this thing as being having weight to it and also having a brain, you know. I then decided to add some variable jump height because at the moment the character just sort of, when he jumps, he's just on a set arc and he always jumps to the same height. And it's always perfectly smooth. But in video games, you want a bit more control over your jump. You want it so that when you uh, release jump in midair, you might fall a bit faster or you or you hop to a, like a shorter height. And uh, I actually followed Sebastian Lake's tutorial on this and he has, it's really good and clear and ex he explains all the maths in a really um, easy to understand way. And I highly recommend that you check that out. 
I'll stick a link to that in the description and to everything that I've, uh, all the resources that I've used for this project. The next thing I did was to add a Super Mario style uh, long jump so that when you crouch and then hit jump immediately, you'll do this long jump and you'll sort of glide through the air and you won't jump up as high but you'll like float really far and you get this like really nice it's, it's satisfying to jump from uh, you know over long distances and another thing i added that's very similar to mario is the rolling mechanic so that um, you can sort of do this spinning roll which you can speed up by tapping roll over and over again and i love that about um Super Mario Odyssey, I thought that, that was an amazing way to, um, you know, get from place to place. Nobody wants to be backtracking or anything if they have to do it slowly. And as I said before, um, this game is with, made with speedrunners in mind. So I'm thinking, like, how can I get these players to the, their next destination? I don't want their brains to shut down while they're running and watching this, like, really slow run animation playing. But the roll wasn't working exactly how I wanted it to. When it goes down slopes, it was getting a good amount of acceleration down the slope, but then um, I wanted that momentum to sort of carry on so that if you managed to find a big slope, you could really speed yourself up for a large, a significant portion of the next part of the level. So with a lot of tweaking, I managed to make it so that you now have three tiers of momentum. Basically, from a normal roll on flat ground, you can get into this sort of um, heightened state, there's like tier two essentially, of rolling, where you're um, rolling at a certain speed and once you're in that sort of state, it's easier to stay in that sort of speed state. Uh, but if you also manage to find a slope to roll down and you manage to get up enough speed, you can get into an even higher speed tier and then once you're in that tier again it's easier to stay in that but if you quit hammering on the roll button you will like slow down into one of the previous states also had to make it so that when you're rolling you didn't stick to all the surfaces quite like you do when you're running because i i, I want to be kind to the speed runners i want to give them the tools but i also want to put obstacles in their way you know that's where the joy of like finding movement tech co comes from is like switching between these different sort of control methods so that you can get around the, the level as fast as possible. So you will sort of bonk and slow down if you're running over rough ground when you're rolling and that's uh, sort of not ideal. So you might want to choose like a long jump over that bit of terrain, for example. And now I'm going to talk about a bunch of little things which might not be so obvious, but they're just interesting considerations which I thought was worth mentioning. The first is that I made it so that when the camera is close to a wall and it gets too close to a player, it sort of avoids the player, it goes above its head so you never get this sort of camera like it clipping into the player, you don't see the inside of the player's head almost, which can sometimes be very jarring in video games. And again, it hurts you as a player if you're trying to, if you want to be aware of your surroundings. The next thing I added was that basically when you jump off of a, a, a slope that you're not able to stand on and you're sliding down, before it was really like launching you uh, uh, away from the wall in essentially the direction of the, that the wall is facing. So I made it so that you can sort of like, for at least one jump, you can sort of stay close to the wall, like stuck to the wall so that you can sort of like almost um, recover yourself if you want to. If there's a platform nearby and you don't want to slide all the way down this slope, you can now get a chance instead of immediately being launched away. Also, it added a sticky landing. So basically, uh, the rest of the time when you're running around and you have a lot of momentum, you'll sort of ma maintain that momentum when you hit the ground. You won't just stop or like immediately revert to your um, you know, your run speed, uh, but that can hurt when you're on platforms, when you're like doing these like tricky platforming um, levels. Uh, you don't often want to land and, um, you know, s continue sliding. You're going to slide off the edge of the thing you just landed on, especially if it's a small surface. So I've made it so that if you release the direction, you'll do this sticky landing. So no matter how fast you're you're, um, you're moving in the air, if you release the joystick, the directional joystick, you'll land with no momentum at all. I also added a silly crouching animation where his uh, head sort of goes into his body and I actually really like it. His big TV head disappearing like a, like he's a turtle or something. Um, that's much better than the uh, just scaling the whole character down like was previously happening. I also didn't like the fact that when you're jumping out of a roll you get more momentum than you get when you're doing a long jump. Sort of like makes the long jump a bit pointless really, like why wouldn't you always just roll? Uh, so I made it so that if you're um, if you're rolling, then and you then jump, you sort of lose a bit of momentum, and you won't get as far. You won't make it across a gap that you would otherwise have made it across if you were doing a long jump. 
And again, it's just forcing players to like mix up their um, movement, you know, mechanics. I also added different jump animations depending on whether you're jumping straight up or you're jumping with some sort of speed in any direction. And you can sort of they, it switches, it blends between those animations in midair as you're changing speed. So if you're running with momentum and then you and you stop in midair, you the your legs will sort of come underneath your body and you'll do a more more vertical drop. I also added some leniency, so if you run off the edge of a platform, you have a split second to hit and jump, even if you're not in contact with the platform anymore and it will still let you jump. You'll find that that's the case in all platforms, really. It's unsatisfying if you if you don't add that. And in the same way, I made it so that if you hit jump as you're like before you even contact the ground, it will then buffer a jump and you'll do a jump so that you don't have these moments where you think you've jumped but then the, the game's like nah you did it a frame before you actually made contact with the ground so i'm not letting you jump and that's it i really hope you've enjoyed this first devlog and found it interesting if you want to support me you can check out my other game it's called go 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 it's a party game for 3 to 16 players there's a new challenge every round and it's completely free to download it's on android and ios only uses one phone doesn't use any internet and you can tell how many times i've pitched this by the speed at which i'm talking <laughs> But anyway, thanks a lot guys and I'll catch you in the next episode.